All right, so moving on, we would like to now invite Dr. Lin Bun Hock, Special Education Consultant from Malacca, Malaysia, to present his research on reading comprehension problems in children with dyslexia and hyperlexia. Happy to see you. Dr. Lin is a parent also of a 25-year-old son with ASD. He has been conferred several awards for excellence in teaching by MOE Malaysia and Malacca State Education Department. Dr. Lin is, a current, uh, is currently a special education consultant at BH Lin Special Needs Consultancy. Let's welcome Dr. Lin. Thank you uh, for the introduction. While well, waiting for the lights to shine, uh, let me just tell you where I come from. I'm, I'm only famous as a father, okay, as a parent. And we were really desperate when my son was discovered with autism. At the time, it was in the early 90s. And of course, nobody had heard. I had even heard of the word autism. Sounds like the orchid word autism. She is a spider for those of you who don't know. So it was really difficult uh, for us. And in fact, when I tried to get my son um, Yes, and that's what I was saying. Um, so most of my the time that I've had, uh, this was from the mid 90s up to now, my main uh, involvement and knowledge, if you want to call it, has very much been in the area of autism. But only in recent years, uh, when I started to run the consultancy, many, many school-going children start to come to me. Uh, and the parents are all talking about, you know, you cannot recognize words, there's universal, there's reversal, and all the other associated problems. And I still recall my first experience of, of knowing what now I call hyperlexia was when a boy came up to near the staircase and there was a, a picture, and he pointed to the picture and just, this was about less than four years old. Right? He said, 1,000 island. I was so shocked because, you know, it was really weird. And this was a colleague's son, together we founded the Early Intervention Centre. It's only more than 10 years later now that I recall the head has to do with hyperlexia. He's now in the University of Nottingham, completing the studies and so on. But boy, did he go through so much problems because nobody could really tell what was the problem. And so with dyslexia and hyperlexia, both groups of children actually have a problem with reading comprehension. And do I feel so inadequate after Patricia and Edmund presented? They are the real experts, okay? If any questions, please ask them. <laughs> Jim is smiling here. Yeah. But are these problems in reading comprehension the same or different for the two groups? Now we come back to this, and there's a lot of overlap in the presentation, but I'm sure if you are dyslexic, you will know your <laughs> repetition. Now, dyslexia is a specific learning disability. You will know that uh, Leon and Shavitz, uh, uh, together with the International Dyslexic Association, have come up, revised this uh, definition. Neurobiological in origin. And that's always a problem trying to explain to the parents. It's like telling them, oh, I need a high school, it waits. You know, something like, it's going to be brain based and you're going to go through it. How do you tell the parent that it's going to be like this, maybe for the rest of his life? But there is hope, what can you do? Okay, uh, characterized by difficulties with accurate fluent. I think you know all this, so I'm not going to go through here. Or on hyperlexia, again, I think Patricia earlier on uh, talked about the three main things. <coughs> Spontaneous reading before the age of five, superior word decoding skill, but impaired comprehension of both listening and reading task. And often, as you, if, if you are interested in going to the literature, it's almost always some scholars argue to the death that it is part of the autism spectrum. Uh, but some say no, it is not. Uh, but that's for discussion another time. Yeah. So if you look at the model of dyslexia, maybe we can think of it this way. There's a problem with word recognition. Problem with decoding, spelling, okay, dyslexia. 
told you my presentation very simple, not like they're so complicated. <laughs> okay, this is the hyperlexia now. Superior word decoding. They somehow are able just to say it like magic, you know, and read it. The spontaneous reading of words, but a primary, a core symptom of difficulty is they don't seem to understand what they're saying. So the 1,000 island came out from his mouth, and then as you went up there and said, boy, you... He doesn't know what he's saying, actually. Hyperlexia. Yeah. So it's interesting, when we look at the link between dyslexia and hyperlexia, we can see that on the side of dyslexia, inferior decoding, inferior word recognition, inferior spelling. But on the other side, there's superior decoding, superior word recognition, but serious problem with comprehending, comprehension, listening, and reading comprehension. So if you look at this in more detail, uh, the core symptoms, dyslexia, difficulties with accurate full reading, poor decoding, poor spelling, whereas for hyperlexia at the bottom, uh, less spontaneous reading before the age of five usually, superior word decoding, and impact comprehension. So you see a basic difference there. Yeah? Core-related symptoms, we've heard a lot about, for dyslexia, we've heard a lot about phonological awareness and deficit in phonological processing. With hyperlexia, there's a breakdown in intertextuality and intersubjectivity. Ask those experts what they mean. But briefly, okay, intertextuality. When you read something, it's not as easy as like you, 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 you can just understand. You need to have like prior knowledge. You need sometimes, or very often, you have to retrieve from your long-term memory what you have read before. In other words, text set in the context of other texts, what you've read, intertextuality. Yeah. But intersubjectivity has to do more with maybe the social awareness. Okay, like in the so people with hyperlexia, for example, it's probably difficult to carry on a conversation. Today's my birthday. Today's my birthday. Today's my birthday. Because I cannot relate to you. The you and I, even the pronouns, there's often a, a reversal and there's difficulty with that. No wonder sometimes we talk about hyperlexia. Uh, people always put it in autism spectrum disorder. This is so characteristic of all these things. So break down the intertextuality and intersubjectivity. Then of course for dyslexia, a secondary problem is if you cannot read, you cannot recognize words, if you cannot spell, of course, you will have problems with reading comprehension, and that leads you to read less, and you don't like to read, so there's reduced reading experience. In hyperlexia, I mentioned earlier on, it's problem with uh, turn-taking conversation, there's problem with understanding figurative language, there's raining cats and dogs outside, how uh, okay. can dogs and cats are uh, out there, you know, that sort of Figurative language is always a problem. Interesting, because just last weekend, I had a parent coming all the way from KL. I always tell the KL people, when you come down to Malacca, little, quiet, sleepy hollow Malacca, not so quiet now, uh, with all the gems, because we're new Singaporeans. Um, uh, lots of experts in uh, KL, you know, people like the prof there, um, and, and why did you come down? But, but there's still so little awareness about hyperlexia. Not because I'm very good, not because they've got nowhere else to go. <laughs> so hyperlexia, what is, what is it? You know, I have a son, before five years old, this child is coming, this boy. And it's just rattling on, writes books, a little professor, <coughs> so to speak. That sort of image. Uh, but we can't really relate to anybody. So I was going to say, is this autism? Is this hyperlexia? You see, you know, all these other associated uh, issues. So talking about looking at profiles, uh, uh, the basic skills, sensory profiles, and later on, this become very important yeah, in my work, uh, screening and assessment. And yes, they can be fixated on a specific topic. If you go on, for example, this guy likes dinosaurs. It cannot stop. The moment you, you better don't mention dinosaurs, okay? If you mention dinosaurs, that's it. The whole day is ruined because there's nothing except dinosaurs. Happy birthday. 
And then for dyslexia, again, the coexisting problem, of course, if they don't read, they don't understand, that's impeded vocabulary, impeded background knowledge. For hyperlexia, echolalia, yeah, because they, 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 they can't follow the conversation, so sometimes they try just to repeat what you have said. And that gets some of his friends so irritated because, you know, when they are in school, why you always follow me? Huh? Why you always want to talk? And then they get punched sometimes. And that, that was some of the school behavior problems the school calls it. Huh? Okay, so how important it is for us to, to increase this awareness amongst teachers and other parents and so on, so that they don't just label the child as uh, naughty, yeah? they're always disturbing your other kids and so on. What's my time? Difficulty in making sense of abstract concepts. Now, it's a very brief look. I think uh, our experts have covered this earlier on, huh? looking at the model of the reading uh, process. That's a very nice diagram there. The first stage is visual encoding, and it involves the visual sensory processing of the print. Yeah? You process it, and eventually leads you to recognize the written words as you identify the letters, the letter sequence. For example, one example given there is like, you, you see S and so is different from uh, law, because S and L are different, because you can recognize it. But S in saw and S in was is the same S. But you are able to recognize it, because you know that it, one is the different sequence and different order. So now this initial thing, uh, stage of visual encoding takes place in our iconic memory. Then we move on to the second stage in working memory, which concerns word recognition. And that's where uh, we process uh, pronunciation, the meaning of both of them at the same time. The third stage of the reading process, yeah, in the, which also involves a long-term memory now, this takes place in the working memory. Sorry. This helps us to bring about understanding of what is being read. And as we were mentioning just earlier on about intertextuality, intersubjectivity, uh, the, the reader must be able to understand, relate to knowledge gained from your prior knowledge, to retrieve from your long term memory for the purpose of schema matching. Yeah. So reading comprehension is not just simply a simple method, yeah? uh, a simple process where you just look at a thing and then you just understand. It is interactive, it is constructive, it involves the nature of the text, uh, the reader's linguistic as well as cognitive competence. Teaching reading comprehension to children with dyslexia and hyperlexia is a very challenging and again, we have some experts here. Um, Baruski, in his research, points out or lists down about five or six different points having an appropriate text layout, the length of the passage, pre reading the selected passage so that you know what are the unfamiliar words that may come out, difficult sentence patterns. You listen to the oral recitation of the selected passage so that you can spot beforehand some possible words that may be mispronounced, pre-teaching some new words first in the selected passage, and then remembering to ask literal what WH questions. Now that has been quite well covered. Uh, well, let's start with WIM first. Like you said SIM, I'm going to say WIM. Uh, but it basically refers to yeah, similar practical uh, techniques. Yeah? Instead of saying when, which is often difficult, too abstract, you say what time, where, you say what place. And for many dyslexia, I think, don't ask why. What reason? Why, uh, why? They, they, they can't seem to catch. Yeah, it's something so abstract to them. Uh, who, you say what person. So it is. Therefore, not necessary to know what each one means in order to answer it, but answering the what of a listening and reading text, which is the focus that we want to help them. Sim has been very well covered. 
by the sim lady, so you will skip this. <laughs> then the story chart, uh, story map chart. This is this is a table where you guide the child through uh, what he or she is reading, and then you talk about the title of the story. You mention the writer's name. Then you ask where the setting is. You ask who are the characters, especially people in the story the child reads. And um, then you mention about events and happenings as you follow the story, what happened. And then finally, how the story ended. Uh, something like this, a yeah? story map chart, where you can record the child's response. And also, similarly, something like this, the answer chart. Uh, I, I, I'm going to close here, so I score a point for being the earliest to finish the answer. Give me an award for that. Now, I, I think some of us, uh, for me, I, as I come across as a parent, yeah, sometimes it's very discouraging when you have children like that. So I'm always talking more from the parent's perspective. And you think sometimes it's so impossible to have a child. But even simple things like that, when I didn't know any better, it was like rocking the child in one, my clients call it a Tha Chai Gai. You know, so a, a little thing for him to rock, help with the sensory issues and so on. And as I was rocking this child, I said, Yao, 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 Dao, Wai Po, Yao, Wai Po, Wen Wo, Hao, Bu, Hao, Wo, Suo, Ba, Ba, Hao, Ma, Ma, Ye. Wai Po, I think the Ha, Ha, Xiao. We don't have a translator here, so we have to find out this really kind of thing. But you know, it was just through a series of just like playing and just going through the rhymes and so on. The mother came, the parents came one day so excited and said, I want my child now, huh? can you say this type of things and all that. Because he was going back and it was to the grandmother, the last day's wife bought him ha ha siao. When he said that, the grandmother responded and laughed. And the whole family just felt, because of that, it changed the whole atmosphere. The family became so supportive. All the while it was, naughty child, you want to do your homework. And you know, the child had come to a stage where they play out the homework pieces high under the table and so on. The parents were so upset. But now the child was, and what was it? It was just a simple way of relating to the child using some repetition, using multi-sensory, when you hear all this big academic terms from the research and so on. But when we break it down and bring it using bottle caps, uh, later on you will hear what Dr. Ong, is these little things that mean so much to me when I see parents and families with children with disabilities every day in my work and my practice. So I leave you hopefully with a message of hope yeah, and encouragement. Thank you.